The second time I was wounded uh, was in the uh, Belgian village of Freycher. Uh, we started out that morning with eight young men from the 83rd Infantry Division who had not been in combat. This was their first day. They had a squad leader, and we barely got started when the squad leader got wounded. So the rest of us kept on going. We got in, in the village of Freycher. Uh, there was an awful lot of ground fire from the German machine guns and whatever. And so they were staying pretty close to behind the tank, and I don't blame a bit to stay away from it. Uh, as we started moving up towards the village, uh, across this field, my tank commander uh, ordered me to put a shot in an upstairs window in a house, which I did. Then he told the driver to pull up next to the house. And, the, and we pulled up next to the house, and the tank commander said, took a hand grenade, lobbed it in the window. When he lobbed it in the window, uh, the, a German came out the front door, ran out like this, looked right down the barrel, couldn't believe it, and, uh, and then turned around looking for some place to hide, uh, saw a pile of wood, and he ran across the road towards the barn, dove down behind uh, a wood pile. My tank commander said, gun left, high explosive, and we put the shell into that wood pile. Uh, in the meantime, uh, there were other tanks on beyond ours. Uh, we're, we're getting things kind of cleaned up, and so we all moved forward a little bit. My tank went across the road, up over a low stone fence, and just flattened out flat like that when uh, a German stood up with a Panzerfaust and fired. Uh, he missed the tank and hit right beside the tank where all these infantrymen were. And uh, a couple of them got pretty good wounds. One kid got a piece out of his nose. Another kid who hit a lot closer to him got his leg. Well, my driver and, and uh, bow gunner uh, had already gotten out of the tank. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, the the uh, tank commander yelled at me, uh, gun left, because he spotted the guy with the Panzerfaust that had fired the first shot. So I'm down with my head down uh, the aiming, and I'm coming across, and here's this guy with a Panzerfaust, and my cannon and machine gun are about like this. I couldn't shoot him yet when he fired the second shot, and the second shot hit on top of the tank. The tank commander standing there with his hands like this, and it hit almost, it hit behind my head, and almost in front of him, he slammed his hands into me like that, jammed me into the, into the uh, telescope, and uh, then he slammed up and knocked all the wind out of me. And then he fell on me, and he slumped off down into the bottom of the tank. Uh, I looked, and he was obviously dead, because the thing had hit right in his face. So I get out, the driver, the, the uh, bow gunner, the loader came out behind me, uh, we're still getting some small arms fire, and I yelled at these infantrymen to get into the building, so they did. And then we started getting shots through the window, and I screamed at them to get back away from the window. So we get back further in the house. Then we start patching each other up. And then once we got our bandage taken care of, I felt, uh-oh, blood. Uh, somebody looked at me and said, oh, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, but I saw blood, so I figured I was wounded and I should do something. And so I, uh, the kid with the real bad leg, I got him on my back. He and I went out the back door of the house, across the field, over to a road in the trees where we wouldn't be shot at. And then a uh, jeep came by, uh, had the major in there who had been shot, and they picked us up, took us to the aid station, uh, dropped us off, and then took the major and went on down to the hospital. I went in the the two of us went in the building. He sat on the chair and I sat on the floor next to him. The, uh, his leg was still bleeding pretty good. And uh, an ambulance came up, the driver ran in and said, Doc, I got room for one more. And the doctor looked at me and said, you go with him. And I said, sir, sir, he's really bleeding. He said, I said, you go with him. I said, okay which, of course, confirmed that I really had a bad wound. <laughs> so I went out and got the ambulance. He took me down to the uh, field hospital, and then they started pulling these little pieces of metal out of my scalp. And I heard him dropping them in a tin pan, and I asked if I could have one. He said yes. So I got a little piece that I 
stuck in my pocket and brought home with me.